Number one, Noah's cousin is exactly seven years younger than Noah. Let C represent Noah's cousin's age and N represent Noah's age measured in years. So first we want to write a function that defines the cousin's age as a function of Noah's age. So as a function of Noah's age means that Noah is going to be the input. Um, so what are the input and output? So Noah's the input and the cousin's age is the output. So then we'll say the cousin equals, and now it says Noah's age is exactly seven years younger than Noah. So his cousin would be Noah's age minus seven. So if you're seven years younger than somebody, it's your age minus seven. Then we want to write the inverse of this function. And the inverse means that we reverse the operation. or operations if there's more, but reverse the operations um, and so and bring it to the other side. So the other way we could say this, instead of saying that we would take Noah's age minus seven, we could also say if we took the cousin's age plus seven, that would equal Noah's age. So if I looked at kind of an example of this just to, to show you. So if we had the cousin's age and we had Noah's age, so if we knew that Noah was 10 years old, then we know that his cousin is three. So one way to look at it is 10 minus seven gives you three. And the other way to look at it is three plus seven gives you 10. So just kind of two different ways we could subtract seven from the N or we could add seven to C. Number two, Noah's cousin is exactly seven years younger than Noah. So the same problem we were just looking at, this time it says let M represent Noah's cousin's age in months. So let's remember we had the cousin equals Noah minus seven, and this was years. So now it wants us to let M represent Noah's cousin's age in months and N represent Noah's age in years. So if Noah is 15 years old, how old is his cousin in months? So the cousin is going to equal Noah's age, right? 15 minus 7. And that's going to give us 8. So we know that he's 8 years old. So then to get M, we would take the years times 12 because there's 12 months in each year. So then 8 years times 12 months um, would give us 96 months for how old his cousin is. Part B says if Noah's cousin is 132 months old, how old is Noah in years? So we would want to go back since this formula is, you know, in years, we would want to take this and go back to years. So this is in months. So we could do 132 divided by 12, and that gives us that Noah's cousin is 11 years old. So then we know if the cousin is 11 years old, then we know we can add 7 to that, right, to get Noah's age from the last problem, because the cousin is the younger one. So then 11 plus 7 would give us that Noah is 18 years old. Then part C wants us to write a function that gives the age of Noah's cousin in months as a function of Noah's age in years. So now we don't have a specific amount. So we just want to keep the variables. So we want to write, um, oops, Noah's cousin's age in months. So this is going to be the M variable because that was here. Let M represent the cousin's age in months. So this is going to be Noah's age in years minus seven, right? Because we know that his cousin is seven years younger than him. And then once we get the age in years, then we will multiply by 12 to get the months. And so that's what was kind of happening here. We subtracted. We did Noah's age minus seven. Then we took that answer and multiplied it by 12. So we're getting Noah minus seven times 12. 
And then if we want to do this backwards, okay, so backwards is going to connect to kind of what we did here. So we started with Noah's age in months and we divided by 12 to get the years. Then we added in that seven because we know his cousin is younger than him. So then this was Noah's age in years. And that's just reversing these. So this is what we did first was subtracted seven. Then we multiplied by 12. So if we do those backwards, to un we want to work backwards. So what we did last, we want to do first and we want to do the reverse of it. So the reverse of multiplying by 12 is dividing by 12. Then we would add seven. So that's another way to get that um, inverse. Number three, each equation represents a function for each find the inverse of the function. So then we just want to work this backwards, okay? So instead of taking W plus 3, we could actually do C minus 3. So if C is 3 bigger than W, right, because we do W plus 3, then the other way to think about that is subtracting 3 from C. So if Y is the same as X minus 2, then Y plus 2 would be the same as X. If Y equals 5 times X, then we could take Y and divide by 5, and that would equal X. And you could write it like this, or you could write it like this. Y divided by 5 equals X. If W equals D divided by 7, then we could do W times 7 to equal D. So just undoing all of those operations and remembering that addition and subtraction undo each other. So those are going to be the reverses. Multiplication and division undo each other. So if you're going to reverse the orders, you want to switch those out. Number four, the number of years is a function of the number of months. The number of months is also a function of the number of years. Write two equations to represent each of these functions. So if we're looking for years, how many years is something, then we would want to take the months and divide them by 12 since there's 12 months in a year. So if we were to take, you know, 36 months to figure out how many years that is, you would divide by 12 to get three years. So then that's how we would write that function. And again, you could write it with that division symbol or you could write it like this, M, M over 12. Then if we have the number of years and we wanna get back to how many months that is, okay, so the months equal the number of years times 12. So we would take however many years we have, we could multiply by 12, and then that would put us at the months. And you can write it like this, y times 12, or um, you can do 12 times the years, so whichever you want. And then why are these inverses of each other? Um, because they're reverse operations. Is one way to say it. Um, you can, I mean, you can explain this a little bit differently, but you could say reverse operations. We, um, the input slash output is reversed. Okay, so instead of dividing by 12, then we multiply um, the y by 12. So those inputs and outputs are, are reversed or reverse operations. Number five. Sketch a graph to represent each quantity described as a function of time. Be sure to label the vertical axis. So this one is talking about the height of your feet. So then that vertical axis, we're going to label height. And I'm just going to write it down here quick so that I can turn it. Um, but so this is going to be the height um, in feet. So you should probably add feet in there too. Um, but the height of your feet above the ground while you're swinging on a swing at the playground. So when you're swinging, right, your feet go up and then come back down. They go up and then they come back down. 
Um, and when you get to the top, you kind of pause for a little bit before you come back down. And your feet probably are touching the ground when you get on the swing, right? Or at least pretty close. Um, obviously, you don't want to touch them on the ground as you're swinging or, you know, that would hurt. So you're going to go, be going up, but not at a constant rate. So it's going to be curved and then you're going to pause at the top and then you're going to come back down and then you're going to go back up and you're going to come back down, right? So something similar to this where you just keep going back up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, if you're going to a slide, the height of your hat. So again, this um, axis will be your height. Let me just reduce that a little bit. So your vertical axis is going to be the height of your hat above the ground as you walk to the slide. So when you're walking to the slide, your hat is staying the same distance off the ground, like the height of your head, right? <clears throat> so that's just going to be a flat line. Then you're going to quick step up because you're going to go up this, the ladder. So then you're going to go up, step up, okay? And then you're going to step up and put your other foot up. You're going to step up and put your other foot up. So you kind of stay the same as that other foot comes up. You're going to get to the top of the slide and then you're going to slide down and your hat's going to get closer and closer <clears throat> to the ground as that happens. Um, a merry-go-round. So what is your distance from the center? Okay, so distance is going to be that vertical axis. And it's going to be, it doesn't say the the measurement here but so just the distance from the center on a merry-go-round so if we just kind of think about a merry-go-round here's the center here's you traveling around right and so your distance from that center since this is a circle is going to stay the same the whole time so however far you are from the center that whole time you're going to stay that same distance so it's just going to be a constant flat line Then um, the last part is you're on a merry-go-round again. And now this time we want the distance from your friend. So now you have your friend standing here, right? So here's your friend and here's you on this merry-go-round going around. You're getting further away from them until you get as far possible. Then you start coming back closer to them. And then you're just going to repeat this further and further away until you get the furthest you can be. And then you start getting closer and closer and closer. So however far you are away from them to start, then you're going to constantly get further away, then constantly get closer back. Constantly further away, constantly closer back. So then this one's going to be kind of like straight line peaks. Unlike the swing, because when you get to the top of your swing, you slow down a little bit. So this isn't staying at a constant rate. Your distance from the ground is not staying constantly the same speed. Number six, Lynn charges $5.50 per hour to babysit. The amount of money she earned in dollars is a function of the number of hours she babysits, which is your input, is the hours. Okay, so the hours she babysits. So which of the following is impossible for this function? Well, she can't babysit a negative amount of hours, right? So you can't babysit for negative one hours. So A would be impossible. Number seven, the instructions for cooking steak with a pressure cooker can be represented by this set of rules where X represents the weight of steak in ounces and F of X, the cooking time in minutes. So part A says, describe the instructions in words so that they can be followed by somebody using a pressure cooker. Um, so these inputs represent the minutes, right? Or these outputs, I'm sorry, represent the minutes, right? So this is the minutes of cooking. And then these X values here is the weight. Okay, so these are the weight of the steak, and then you get the minutes of cooking. So if we're talking about this, then we're saying, you know, if you have a steak, um, well, we'll just say if, yeah, if your steak is between 8 and 12 ounces, 
cook, um, cook it for seven minutes. Then you can go and, you know, write out each of these if you wanted to, or you could say then add approximately one minute of cooking time per additional ounce, right? Because each of the rest of these go up by one. So then you need eight minutes if it goes up to 13. So from 12 up to 13. Then you add another minute if it's between 13 and 14, 10 if it's between 14 and 15. So if your steak is between eight to 12 ounces, which remember came from the input, cook it for seven minutes, which related to the output. Then add approximately one minute of cook time, right? So then that's your output. So add one to your output for each additional ounce, which is that input. So then it says graph this function. Um, and so we know that at eight ounces, we needed to cook it for seven minutes. So I'm gonna plot that point. So eight ounces, seven minutes, all the way up to 12 ounces needed to be seven minutes. So this is that first one. Then we said from 12 to 13, it was eight ounces, or sorry, eight minutes. So from 12 to 13 ounces, it's going to be eight minutes. And we don't want to cook it. If it's 12 ounces, it should still be seven minutes. So we'll put an open circle here, but then we'll draw a line all the way over to 13. Then at 14, it jumps up to nine minutes all the way over to, I'm sorry, 13 to 14. Then at 14, okay, it jumps up. And then from 14 to 15, it was 10 minutes. And then from 15 to 16, it was 11 minutes. And remember, you want an open circle because there's not an equal sign in that next interval. Number eight, the absolute value function gives the distance from zero of a point X on the number line. Q can also be defined using this piecewise function, where if X is greater than zero, then it's equal to the X. If X is less than zero, then it's the opposite of X. Determine if each point is on the graph of Q. For each point you believe is not on the graph, change the output of the coordinate so that it is. So for this one, if we did Q of um, X, so remember your X coordinate is your first one, so now that number is less than zero. So that's going to be going into the, uh, or kicking back out the opposite of X. Okay, so we're plugging in this negative three and it's kicking back the opposite of negative three, which is positive three. And this matches this one, so this is good. If we plug in zero, we just get back the same thing. That's in this top part of the equation, right? So if you plug in zero, anything zero or, excuse me, zero or higher, you get back the same thing. So we plug in zero, we get back zero. That's true. The next one is negative five. So if we plug in negative five, we should get back the opposite of negative five. So this should be kicking back the opposite of negative five, which is positive five. So this is not true, okay? This should be negative five, five. D, again, is a negative X value. So if we plug in a negative X value, we should get its opposite back. And 72 is the opposite of negative 72, so this is good. E, if we plug in four fifths, which is positive, we should get the same thing back. So we should be getting back four fifths here, not negative four fifths. So if we plug in a positive number, we should get back that exact same number. So this would be the point that's on that graph. 